In today's video, I'm going to cover some details and some helpful hints on how to shoot in sunglasses while shooting the sport of archery. So this is oftentimes a pretty uh, common asked question on how to shoot in sunglasses or how did I shoot in sunglasses. Now there's a few things that you need to take into consideration, a few things you should look out for and some features and also a, quite a few to avoid. Um, so in this video I'm going to cover all the details and tips and tricks that I have found over the years while trying to shoot in sunglasses. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm working to make this channel a great resource for all types of archery to make you a better archer and to basically remove all the growing pains that I had when I was coming up in this sport. And essentially, there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's actually quite a lack of information out there. So ultimately just producing all this content to help make you a better archer. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Um, pumping out a lot of content and you don't want to miss out. So this is very uh, much so a topic that is really in need of being covered. There's a lot of things out there that have gone around on the best types of sunglasses to shoot in, uh, things to avoid or whatever, but technology has changed a lot within the last few years, especially when it comes to how they manufacture these lenses. And um, so I'm gonna cover a whole lot of information that you can use to your advantage and hopefully it will actually give you an advantage out there in the sun uh, because there are a lot of people out there that cannot shoot in sunglasses unless they are heavily modified, such as myself. You know, I really wasn't happy with some of the shooting specific sunglasses that were out there on the market, especially how they make you look. You know, I just regular, would rather wear a civilian style type of uh, sunglasses um, that do offer good optical clarity and a lot of the features that um, you know are claimed to be exclusive in some of those other types of sunglasses. So the first thing to take into consideration when fitting sunglasses is the fitment of the sunglasses themselves. Before we get into covering all of these sunglasses that I do have on uh, hand here to show you the examples of the differences, I'll let you know that uh, a few of the ones that I am recommending, I'll have links in the description below on where you can get those. Disclaimer, those are Amazon affiliate links. So when you click on those links and buy those products or do any shopping on Amazon within 24 hours, I do get royalties off of that. It helps keep this channel free for everyone at home. It really does make a difference. And producing this content for everyone does take some time. Um, I'm happy to share the information and I really appreciate the people who click on those links and shop uh, because it does make a difference. So the first thing that you need to take into consideration when picking a pair of sunglasses to shoot in is the fitment. Now not everybody's face and shape and size is all the same. Nose shapes, nose size, nose location, eye width, all those things all change from person to person. Um, so there are a couple things to be aware of out there on the market. So there are fitments of standard fitment, there's youth fitment, there is Asian fit. Uh, there's all sorts of different types that change basically how the nose piece or lack of nose piece and where it is on the sunglass itself. Um, so there's a lot of different options out there to take into consideration. You know, I always recommend just shopping at uh, like a sunglass store or something like that, a sunglass hut, something that you can put the sunglasses on, feel them, uh, look through them and everything, or find them online where a good return policy exists uh, because you really have to be particular in the type of sunglasses that we shoot in uh, and you're gonna see why as we move forward. So in my opinion, the most important thing and the most critical thing when it comes to shooting in sunglasses is the nose piece itself. Now, you're gonna see a variance of different sizes and shapes of nose pieces and the sunglasses that I have behind me. I'm just gonna show you a couple reasons as to why there is an issue. Now, this one here, as you can see, this is the Radar EV from Oakley. And the nose piece, it's comfortable, it's rubberized, so it sticks on you despite sweat and things like that, but not really applicable for archery because as we are shooting, we are looking with our eye so close over the bridge of our nose uh, that these really, really wide nose pieces are an issue and you can't see over them. Um, they can be very challenging to see around um, and very difficult to actually use unless you have uh, modified them heavily, which I have in several of the sunglasses behind me. Now, this type of sunglass, this is a, <clears throat> 
This is an Oakley Jupiter factory light. It's um, a high-end pair of sunglasses. And you'll notice this nose piece right here between where the edge of the lens is and where the nose piece exists and where your nose sits, it's very, very thin. There's not much in the way of obtrusion. And when you put them on, you can push them back very far and now it almost disappears completely behind my nose. Now the shape of my nose makes it a little more difficult to shoot around because it has this bit of a bump right here that comes out and then it goes back down. Um, that bump right there is really hard to see around as I'm shooting, uh, so it makes it challenging uh, for me more so than a lot of other people out there. Another, another style of sunglasses that you can go for is a wireframe style sunglass. Uh, that uses adjustable nose uh, bridge pieces. Um, this is an older pair. This is the Oakley Splinters. Um, basically, as you shoot in these, you can bend and move and manipulate these nose bridge pieces in and out to basically change the fit of them. So you can adjust them, like in this particular pair uh, that I shot with a long time ago. Uh, I have the nose bridge pieces spread so far apart so that way when I am shooting I can push them really far back against the, my face and now the uh, actual wire itself disappears inside of the bridge of my nose. Now this is an issue because my eyelashes will wipe the lens all the time and I feel them all the time when I'm at full draw. but. Before some of these other uh, lenses came out and options came out, this was the only thing that I could actually shoot in because I could shove them all the way inside of my nose bridge. Not ideal, not exactly comfortable. Uh, some people can get away with these. Um, they just didn't really work for me. Now, when you are choosing an actual pair of sunglasses, the main thing that I would choose them for is uh, the ability to change your lenses in and out. Many of the options behind me, you can pop the lenses out, switch them for different lighting conditions, and keep the frame fit the same. So that way you really feel them the same, they feel the same on your face, um, and there, there's no real major change. But when you go from a overcast day to you know a bright, hot, sunny day, you can change the lenses out for different conditions. And I really think that that is an advantage um, especially because even on an overcast day, sometimes the lighting can be a bit harsh or you're shooting inside a stadium and they turn the stadium lights on and then there's a ton of glare around you and you still want to use the coatings that are on some of these lenses to your advantage to reduce that glare and ultimately reduce eye fatigue and ocular fatigue over the length of the day. So shooting in lenses is actually a big advantage in my opinion as far as longevity and sports performance goes. Now the main difference between the two is this is a one-piece lens and this is a two-piece lens. Now a two-piece lens, the way that they lock in uh, generally are all pretty much the same and the way they lock in, uh, they use the nose bridge itself. So you cannot remove the nose bridge. That is a piece that is integral uh, to the actual design of the lens itself. And ultimately the way you get them out is you just pull them away from the nose bridge and then you snap it back in place um, just like that. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now these ones are a little bit more different. You gotta remove the nose piece out of the way, then the lens drops out and you can snap a new one back in. Um, but these one piece lenses like this, in general, are not uh, locks. So you have to have the ones that are specifically called lock. This is a uh, Radar EV that is non-lock. And this is also a Radar EV that is non-lock as well. And so what you can see is this lens wants to just fall out relatively easily. Now this is an older pair of lens uh, sunglasses. This is called a radar, just a regular radar, not EV. And it is also the non-lock version. As, and as you can see, I've put a piece of a rubber band on the nose to hold that lens up in place because if it was not there, the lens will fall out. The actual nose bridge itself holds the lens right here in the center and that is um, an important part to keep the lens in. But if you go with something that is a lock version, so this is the radar lock, I believe, um, it actually has a locking mechanism that holds it in the side here. The nose bridge is an extra added support, but if you're careful with them, they won't fall out. So essentially, you unlock it like this, the lens comes out, you can put a new lens in, and um, basically the hooks where the locking pins go are much deeper on these. So you can slide them in and then lock them in place and now they won't fall out, uh, at least not that easily. 
So that's important to take into consideration. Now with these one piece lenses, you'll see that this used to have a peg here. Um, this one still has a peg here. Now that is where the nose piece itself will snap onto and then that's how it supports the actual lens. Um, but on these pair of radar locks, like I said, they don't really need to have a lens there for, or a, a nose bridge there to keep the lens in. You can see that I have cut that little T-post off of these uh, sunglasses. Now, it's not exactly fun to take a Dremel uh, or side cutters to a pair of sunglasses that cost you a fair bit of money. Um, but when you're using them specifically for archery like I did, um, and I was lucky enough to have a sponsor, it was okay. Uh, it was worth, worth the risk. Now, uh, when you're shop shopping for sunglasses, there are gonna be differences in qualities in the actual lenses themselves. Um, first, there's the difference in, in materials. There's either polycarbonate lenses or there is, uh, there's glass lenses. Polycarbonate is just basically plastic. Uh, now your optical clarity, so the amount of, uh, like how clear the actual image is, is gonna be much higher on a glass lens versus a plastic lens but glass lenses in general are much heavier um, and they are often in times in far less uh, actual sunglass options out there. So, you know, it's really common, especially in sports uh, glasses to use um, plastic or polycarbonate lenses for safety, uh, cheapness, lightness, and things like that. So don't be afraid when, you know, there's your options between uh, clear, uh, when there's options between glass and plastic. So I chose plastic. Um, and there are a lot of different options out there as far as different uh, shades of lenses, different uh, qualities of lenses and things like that. And I'm gonna show you a few of those options here now. So there are different colors, different options. Here's a gray option. Here is an option uh, that is more of like a, like an orange-ish, reddish tint. Um, you have your golf lenses, uh, you have many many different options this is a i think this is a uh called road lens now for these this specific style and many of these styles that i'm going to recommend there's different options when it comes to uh vents you'll see these vents cut in the top here um this one does not have a vent as you can see there's no vent cut in the top um the reason i chose vents is because i had to push the sunglasses so close to my face that uh, you know as i was sweating especially when it's humid out my lenses would start to fog up so you have to have at least in my opinion it's good to have those vents in the top of the lenses to let a bit of that steam out and then they don't fog up at all so there is a thing to can be considerate of is whether or not you will be using uh polarized sunglasses or not so polarized sunglasses basically what it does is it reduces glare the amount of glare that comes into your eye uh, basically, it filters out some of that reflected light and uh, really cleans it up for you and makes it better. It cleans up the shadows and reduces the glares. Ultimately, it makes uh, looking at things much more pleasant and removes, like, especially if you're shooting on some of those plasticky targets, if the sun is coming in at the right angle, you'll get a bright glare off of it, um, you know, from the sun, and it's hard to see depending on where you're shooting and which hemisphere you're in, of course. In my opinion, polarization is an absolute asset and it is important to have, but what you need to make sure of is that the lenses are produced in a very particular way. Very recently, they have switched to making these lenses with the polarization in the middle of two pieces of plastic. So essentially, polarization is, uh, and how they polarize lenses, it's just a, a sheet of film that gets put on, it's a coating that gets put on, right? And if they just put it on the outside or the inside, what used to happen is that you would have um, distortion. So where what means what that means is, if I'm looking at you, the camera, the target, or whatever it is, as I put on my sunglasses, if they are polarized, I will see the object not actually where it is. Now, why is that important? It's important because if you're shooting and it's cloudy out or it's not very sunny. And then all of a sudden the sun comes out from behind the clouds, you put on your sunglasses and I go to shoot you, the target, you're not where I think you are anymore and I'm actually, I'm literally aiming in a different spot in space. So you have to make sure 
that the uh, polarization film is sandwiched between two pieces of the lens. When they do that, it removes all of that distortion from the polarization. So it used to be a problem back in the day. It is not anymore. Just make sure there's a film in the center of the two sandwich pieces. Um, the torch sunglasses absolutely do that. Um, I believe some of the Oakleys do that. Uh, I can't speak for some of the other brands and uh, really have nothing to note about the glass lenses because I don't know how they add their coating for polarization. But I know that that can cause an issue if it is not sandwiched between two pieces of the lens itself. Another thing to really take into consideration is the actual distortion near the lens edge. And in a way that you can test that is very simple. All you have to do is if I'm looking at you and I take my sunglasses and I'm looking at my target or whatever, and as I lift it, especially towards the edge of where your nose is, and I move it out of the way so I can see you, if I'm seeing you shift at all, or seeing the target shift as I bring the lens in front of me or away from you, what's happening is, again, the same thing, that distortion. Most people, when they're wearing sunglasses, they look through this spot right here, on the actual lens because your eyes are generally headed forward. But in archery, we turn our head and now we're looking through this edge of the lens, which is where a lot of distortion can come in, especially if the lenses are not built with that in mind. So you have to be careful of that and do not, like I said, wear the ones where it shifts as you look back and forth like that because you're gonna change your impact points when you put them on or off or change the lenses to different colors. So be careful of that as well. Now, something that I really look for is just basically the fit here is tight against my face. Um, as you can see with these sunglasses, when I take off the nose bridge, I have to tip them upwards like this. If I don't, the there's a gap here. So if I put them back down on my actual ears where they belong, I can see a big gap of daylight here along the lens edge. So just putting them up like this uh, makes it nice and comfortable. Now, some of the other lenses that I will recommend uh, that are really beneficial, in my opinion, um, are the Prism lenses that Oakley has. The Prism Road was my favorite. The Prism Golf is also a favorite of mine, especially during overcast conditions. Uh, basically, what they do is it changes the contrast of certain colors. Uh, like the Golf actually makes green pop um, and makes green much brighter to you. Not necessarily important for archery, um, but I did, I do like the Prism Rhodes. Um, also, if you were to pick like a gray uh, lens, it will evenly darken all colors, evenly across the color spectrum. As you change from different colored lenses, some uh, colors will actually be brighter and then some will be dimmer. I don't really necessarily like the ones that change the actual color of the target face deliberately. Not a fan of that um, because as I shoot with them on and off, uh, lighting conditions change all the time and I'd rather have something consistent and look consistent for me uh, as I'm competing and practicing. Sunlight, daylight, uh, overcast, inside at a, you know, in fluorescent light or whatever. I just want it to be natural and, and look relatively the same for me. So anyway, that covers just about everything when it comes to sunglasses. I hope that helps uh, at least give you a better informed choice when you're choosing sunglasses and which ones to purchase. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.